at you, and as soon as I'm done, we're going to get started with the prelude. All right? Heavenly Father, bless this choir, bless our voices, Lord. We are, if we have a jubilant Sunday, Father, in the midst of what is going to be a more meditative week. So bless our voices, and Lord. Don't just make it pretty music. Bring people right to the foot of your cross. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Holy City, gentlemen. Last night I lay a-sleeping, there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, methought the voice of angels from heaven and answer rang. Methought the voice of angels from heaven answering. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, lift up your gates and sing. My dream was changed, the streets no longer rang. Hushed were the glad hosannas, the little children sang. The sun grew dark with mystery, the morn was cold and chill. As the shadow of a cross arose upon a lonely hill, as the shadow of a cross arose, upon a lonely hill. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, lift up your gates and sing. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to
Welcome to St. Giles. It is good to be here together on Palm Sunday. Um, kiddos, let's, let's face everyone and wave your flags one more time. <laughs> All right, kids, now you can go have a seat with your families. And you all may be seated. We've got several announcements this morning um, on the back of your bulletin, if you'd like to look at that with me. Really, we are all about Holy Week this Sunday. We've got Maundy Thursday coming up at 5.45, starting with dinner. Um, just come. There are no reservations needed. We're going to be doing that with our sister churches, Christ Pres and Community West. So it, it's going to be a beautiful evening. Come on out for that. That is here at St. Giles, 545 dinner, and then 7 o'clock, a unified service here in the sanctuary. Then we have Good Friday at Community West, and that's at 7 p.m. at Community West. And then Easter Sunday here, 1030 a.m. Um, kids, We've got an Easter egg hunt afterwards, and I hear there are gonna be over a thousand eggs. So get ready for that. Um, and we'll also have catered snacks afterwards just to celebrate joyfully Easter. Well, friends, it is good to be together this morning. I wanna welcome all our visitors who are here with us and all who are on our live stream this morning. Welcome. Let's stand now, let's prepare our hearts for worship. Let's enter into worship this Palm Sunday and let's sing Ride On, Ride in Majesty. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we declare this morning that you are king. As Psalm 24 proclaims, lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord Almighty. 
He is the king of glory. Lord, we declare that this morning. You are the king of glory. You have all authority and power. We are amazed that you, the king of kings, entered in Jerusalem on a donkey in humility. We are in awe that you pursue us with a love so amazing. Thank you for your steadfast faithfulness. We worship you this morning and we cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Jesus' name, amen. I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The holy chase, the holy chase. I see His love and mercy washing over all our sin. A people sing, a people sing. Hosanna. Selfless faith, the selfless faith. I see a new revival, a searing as we pray and see. We're all our needs, we're all our needs. Sana in the high Hear my heart and make it clean Open up my eyes to the things unseen Show me how to love like you have loved me Break my heart for what breaks yours Everything I am for your kingdom's cause As I walk from air into eternity Hosanna Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we declare it today. Save us, save us. Hosanna, Hosanna. Lord, we lean into you, lean into you. Because we know without you, Lord, who would we be? Where would we go? You truly do have the words of eternal life. 
You are a God who exceeds our expectations over and over and over. And so this morning, we proudly declare, Hosanna, Hosanna, come King of Kings. Come into our lives, come into our neighborhoods, come into our nation, come into our world. Lord, we need you, we need you everywhere we look. The power of sin and death presses in more and more. But it is our confession this morning, Lord Jesus, we need you, save us. Lord, we offer up to you the sin of our hearts. Lord, we offer up to you the sin of our city. Lord, we offer up to you the sin of the world. And to all of it, we declare, Hosanna, save us. We need you. Come, King of Kings. We turn our eyes to you. And it's in your precious name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Friends, let's continue singing. be seated. Amen. Kids, I want to invite you to come back forward with Miss Heather. Good morning and welcome everyone.
Good morning. Let's wait and give everyone a chance to join us. It's so good to have you all here today. And I want to say thank you, first of all, because you helped us um, lead us in worship this morning um, when you came down the aisle waving the palms, right? And we're going to talk about that today. This is a palm, right? Palm leaf from a palm tree. And um, we are celebrating Palm Sunday, right? And Palm Sunday is the day that we remember that Jesus rode into Jerusalem, right? On a what? What was he riding? A donkey. He was riding a donkey. And the people were very excited to see him. And they were shouting something over and over and over again. What was it? Hosanna. 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 Glory to God in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna. Well, I wanted to talk about that word, Hosanna, because sometimes in church it's really easy to say big words, wonderful words, and not always know exactly what we're saying, right? And I think it was a long time before I knew what Hosanna meant, but Hosanna means, Lord, save us, save us, please, save us. So they were saying, these folks were saying, welcome, welcome, he who comes in the name of the Lord, save us, save us. That's what they were saying. And you know what's so amazing about that? Well, what's going to happen next Sunday? What are we celebrating? Easter. And we celebrate on Easter that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose from the dead for our sins. So even though these people had no idea what was going to happen, they were right to say, Lord, save us, because they needed the Lord to save us. And we need it. So everybody, let's say one time. Ready? After me. Hosanna. 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 Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, you may go with Miss Lindsay to Kids on Worship, down to nursery, or back with your parents.
Amen. Thank you, community choir. Well, good morning. I don't know if we've said that yet. Good morning. It's good to see you all. Good morning to those of you who are joining us via live stream this morning. It's good to have you with us. Uh, my name is Josh Madrinsky. If I, if I haven't got the chance to know you, I and my wife, Rebecca, who has sat down. Um, we tried to hold the fort down here at uh, St. Giles. And so we're glad that you're with us this morning for Palm Sunday. Uh, we've been going through a series in the Psalms, praying the Psalms, and we're going to continue to do that this morning. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to do this together because this morning we're entering into a psalm that really would have been very liturgical in its nature. There would have been uh, somebody leading and the people responding. And so we're going to turn to Psalm 118 this morning. But, but you don't have to open your Bible because what I'm going to ask you to do is stand up. So would you stand? And we're gonna read this responsively this morning, really the way it should have been intended to be read or sung. And as we do so, there's a reason we're on Psalm 118 this morning. I want you to pay attention for some familiar quotes in Psalm 18. Are we ready? Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say. His love forever. Let the house of Aaron say. His love forever. Let those who fear the Lord say. His love forever. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You've become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. And we continue. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the feastal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you this morning. We give thanks for your word. We declare it, Lord, we declare it into the earth. You are good, you are good. This Palm Sunday, as we look at these words, Lord, teach us, teach us what it means to be thankful, what it means to lean deeply into who you really are, that gratitude is the natural response of our hearts. We ask this in Jesus' precious name, amen. Please be seated. That was pretty good. I feel like you all have done this before. That was, that was strong. Well done, well done. Um, well, so th- each, each week we've had a different type of psalm, genre of psalm, and if you didn't pick up on it, this is a psalm of thanksgiving. Now, one could say Palm Sunday was kind of the return of the king, right? Here he comes. We're gonna turn to some other literature Return of the King to address a a piece here. Because one of the great Christian debates of the past 75 years has been which character in Lord of the Rings is supposed to be the Christ character, right? Okay, it may be a debate in some of the nerdier circles of Christianity in the last 75 years, but nevertheless, debate stands because you've got so many wonderful characters that J.R.R. Tolkien wrote into the Lord of the Rings, and they're all you kind of kind of feel gospelly in their own rights. You, you've got Aragorn, right? The 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 literal humble king that comes, right? You've got you've got Gandalf, the the prophetic priestly type. But then you've got the obvious one, Frodo, 
right? The, the sacrificial lamb who's running to Mount Doom to take away the, the evil of the world. This, this is all feeling kind of gospel-y, right? Who is it? Which one is it? I just want to muddy the waters this morning and add one more name to the group. One more name. I heard it. Samwise. Samwise. Yes. Raise your hand. Thank you. I knew it was you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. (laughs) Samwise, the steadfast, loyal friend of Frodo who goes through everything with him, everything, refuses to leave his side, even when Frodo is deceived and, and sends him away. Quite rudely, Samwise doesn't give up on his friend. He stays in the distance and actually winds up saving his life. He's steadfast, he's faithful, a faithfulness that just exceeds expectations. And of course, if you've read the book or you're familiar with the movie, both of them have this beautiful moment. This is the movie's depiction of it. The the book has made it clear, this is Frodo's quest alone. He has to be the one that goes and saves the world, essentially. But there comes a point where he can no longer go, physically depleted. And there's this great line where Sam says to him, Mr. Frodo, I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. And it's this character of Samwise, it stands out so brilliantly in the story because he has this steadfast faithfulness. Frodo doesn't deserve it. I mean, Tolkien writes that in so clearly. He doesn't deserve it. And yet, He never gives a reason for why Sam is such a good friend. It's actually just his character. It's just his character. He is just faithful, so faithful. It's the kind of faithfulness that exceeds expectations in much of the same way as we're beginning Holy Week on this Palm Sunday. We have to be, we have to see the one whose steadfast, loving faithfulness is so amazing that it eternally exceeds our expectations of what a savior is. And so because of that, it roots us in thanksgiving. That's why we're in Psalm 118, is we're really celebrating the one whose steadfast faithfulness exceeds our expectations, right? Psalm 118, um, being a psalm, of a psalm of thanksgiving, the theme of it is God's steadfast love. Did you pick up on that? You know, right out of the beginning, it's this call and response, you know, let. All of Israel say, his love endures forever. Just back and forth. But then the very last line here, what did we say? Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His what? His love endures forever. Some folks are familiar with this Michael Card book. He wrote a great book on this. Um, but it's this Hebrew word right there that we've, we occasionally hear, hesed. Hesed, or is anyone familiar with this word hesed? It's the steadfast, covenantal, enduring love of God. It's only used for God. It's, it's that love that never gives up, no matter what. It pursues us. It exceeds our finite expectations of what love is. And what's so neat about Psalm 118 is that it's part of a group of Psalms, um, Psalm 113 through 118 called the Egyptian Hallel. Uh, uh, See, I don't see Kirsten here anymore. She being our native Egyptian. Um, Does anyone know why they're called Hallel? because of the repeated word of, use of the word hallelujah, which means praise God. Did you see even in our, our, our Psalm today, praise God, all of them, it's, the focus is on praising God. And these would have been Psalms that would have been sung as a group in, in kind of the high worship times, especially the week of Passover, which is the week of Holy Week, right? Now, throughout this sermon series on Psalms, um, we've been reading these Psalms, praying these Psalms, but in practice, they were both prayed and sung. And there's this wonderful band um, Rebecca and I discovered a couple years ago. They're a Messianic Jewish band, young. In other words, they're, they're Jewish in, in ancestry, but they're believers in Christ. 
And what they did is they, they took all these different psalms and they put them to kind of a contemporary Middle Eastern music and they sing them in Hebrew. And there's something about hearing a psalm sung in Hebrew. It just grabs you, especially this one. And so I'm gonna play you about just, just shy of a two minute clip of this young Messianic Jewish band singing parts of Psalm 118. Are you ready? If anybody has the spiritual gift of Middle Eastern dancing, we expect you to exercise it at this point, okay? All right, so here we go. <laughs> You got it? Okay, next week we're singing it, ready? All right. <laughs> now, I, I, maybe you, you, you felt the same thing, I don't know. That last verse, the, the, the about the, just lost my track, the train of thought there, the cornerstone verse. Something about hearing that saying in Hebrew, it just it added this weight to it, where you, you realize the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. These are words that have been echoed for centuries, millennia. I don't know why. Hearing it in Hebrew, there's just something about it that grabs my imagination. And the way they chose to do it, that song, did it, did it feel, it felt joyful, right? But it, it kind of feels triumphant, doesn't it? I mean, I can just imagine, just the, 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 the image you get is, this is, this is the return of the king. This is, this is the stone the builders rejected. He's taking his place. This Thursday will be Maundy Thursday. Of course, we'll read about the Last Supper and the foot washing. But in Matthew's gospel, which is not the gospel we'll do, but in Matthew's gospel, maybe you've noticed this before, at the very end, of this scene, it says, when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Do you ever wonder what they sung? It was Psalm 118. It would have been the conclusion of the Hallel. They would have sang, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, right before they go to the Mount of Olives. I don't know if you noticed when we read it earlier, but there's another very significant quote taken from Psalm 18. Did you see it? Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord from the house of the Lord. We bless you. We've been saying it all morning, but what's the Hebrew way to say, save us? Does everybody look straight to the back. See? Yeah, that's what, the kids made that this week. The banner. Yeah, let's say it together. Ready? Hosanna. Hosanna. That's right. The same Hosanna we've been singing all morning. The same Hosanna 
that we get in Mark 11. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches and they'd cut, that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. During the triumphal entry, as Jesus rides in on the foal of a donkey, the people who gathered around waving palm branches that week of Passover, they sang the song they'd been singing all week. They sang Psalm 118 as Jesus entered Jerusalem. The final song of the Hallel, Hosanna, save us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And they, I do not doubt, were celebrating with shouts of triumph and joy, right? But of course, what kind of savior did they think they needed? Military, national leader, right? They say it right here, blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. They're looking for that, that nation of Israel coming, right? They want a savior who would address the biggest, baddest problem that all of Israel had, and we know who that was, right? The Romans, yeah. And so they essentially welcome him, arms right open through the front gate. Blessed is he who comes to kick the butt of the Romans, right? Blessed is he who comes to take care of my biggest problems. That's who they thought the Messiah would be. The guy who would get them back to the glory days of David. And the complicated reality is that they weren't entirely wrong. Jesus really did come to take care of their biggest problem. But the complication was they didn't know what their biggest problem was, did they? The Jewish people thought that they were missing out on the blessings of God because there, there was a giant nation in their way. But the truth is, it's the biggest problem they had to being close to God, is there was giant what? Sin. There was giant sin in their way, and there was nothing they could do to change it. There was nothing they could do to change it. You see, they wanted a victory over the Romans, but Jesus came to give them a victory over sin and death. The Jewish people thought that they were missing out on these blessings, but they were the ones standing right there in the way of them. They wanted a God to, that would love their nation, but they got a God who loves more than just their nation, for God so loved the whole world, right? They wanted a warm, fuzzy heart of victory, like those of us who were watching March Madness last night but they got a God who longs to give them completely new hearts and a new spirit. They wanted a God who would dwell in their temple forever, but they got a God who would not be confined any longer by a temple. He would dwell with them, always in them. They wanted a God who, who they could convince, save us, save us, but they got a God who decided before the foundation of the world, I will save them no matter what it takes. Because you see, they, they wanted a God who was a fighter, right? A God who was a fighter. But you know what they got? They got a savior who's richly, mercifully, graciously, lovingly, and eternally, not a fighter, but faithful. He's faithful, so exceedingly faithful that he would take our place on the cross and die the death we were supposed to die so that all who believe in him shall not die, but have everlasting life. That's why we sing Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love, his steadfast, covenantal, exceedingly faithful love endures forever. Brothers and sisters, as we enter into Holy Week, this is day one, we step into it. This is a week of savoring his faithfulness to you, savoring his faithfulness. And it is a faithfulness that still to this day, still to this day is exceeding our expectations. It goes beyond our heart's desires. For some of us this week, I think singing Psalm 118 is gonna be a song of joy, 
right? Blessed is the Lord, blessed is the Lord. And I hope it is, I hope it's just all week long the Lord just keeps showing you his faithfulness in remarkable ways, right? And, just, and, I, and I encourage you, if, if you do nothing else on Holy Week, just every morning, thank God for his faithfulness, right? Let it be joyful. Even as we move into Maundy Thursday and Good Friday, you know, that's not, that's not a time of guilt and shame. That's a time of God's faithfulness. That's why we celebrate. That's why it's called Good Friday. I think for some of us though, this Holy Week is, is not gonna feel encouraging. Um, doesn't feel triumphant because it's a hard week. It's, it's a challenging season of our lives. And yet, I still wanna encourage you. Sing parts of Psalm 118. Sing Hosanna, Hosanna. Lord, save me, save me. I can't do it, I need you. Would you enter into this? And do so with the confidence of the one who knows what it means to be the stone that the builders rejected but now has become the cornerstone. He truly is exceedingly faithful. He will not abandon you. He is with you, he is with you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you really are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Oh, Jesus, you are the exceedingly faithful one, so faithful that you really did stop at nothing. Stop at nothing for us. Thank you, thank you. We praise you, we praise you, we bless your name. But we don't stop praying, Hosanna. We don't stop praying, Hosanna. Lord, there's, there's still much in this world that needs your touch, that needs your wholeness. And so we ask, King of Kings, ride into our lives, ride into our neighborhoods, ride into this very world. Would your faithfulness exceed our expectations and would you help us to set our hearts and minds on those things that you desire and you alone. We love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us first. We pray it in your name, Jesus. Amen. So this is a, <clears throat> this is a new song for this combined service, but the chorus is really easy to learn, and it, it says it. Faithful, faithful you are. Faithful, faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are because all your promises are yes and amen. All your promises are are indeed yes and amen so let's stand let's sing it together it's got some joy to it so let's sing with joy it goes like this we're saying faithful you are faithful forever you will be you are faithful you are all your promises all your promises, how oh, yes and amen, all oh, your, all oh, your promises, how oh, yes and amen. Sing it again, faithful you are, faithful forever you will be, you are faithful you are. Promises, oh yes and amen, all your, all your promises, oh yes and amen. Father of kindness, you poured out grace. Oh, Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness, you filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help in time of need. Lord, I can't help but sing. Sing it out. We sing, faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. You are faithful you are. Is 
beautiful Savior, you brought me near. Oh, beautiful Savior, you have brought me near. You pulled me from the ashes, you have broken every curse. Blessed Redeemer, you have set this captive free. Lord, I can't help but sing with sing faithful. You are faithful forever. You will be. You are faithful. You are. All your promises are yes and amen. All your, all your promises are yes and amen. Sing, I will rest, so I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness, so I will rest in your promises. My confidence. He's your faithfulness, yeah, I will rest in your promises, my confidence. He's your faithfulness, we sing faithful, you are faithful, forever you will be, you are faithful, you are all your, all your promises. And amen, all your, all your promises. I ah, yes, we sing faithful. We sing faithful. You are, yes, you are faithful. Forever you will be. You are faithful. You are all your, all your promises. I ah, yes, and amen, all your. Promises are yes and amen. All your, all your promises are yes and amen. 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 Please be seated. Please be seated. Well, if you've if kept up with the e news, I won't ask for a show of hands who thoroughly reads the e news every week. But if you've kept up with it, you'll know that this is the beginning of our mission expansion fund for uh, global missions. And every Easter we do this. This is a special offering we take up at, during this season for this week and for next week. And to explain what that is, I've asked Walter Varvel, who is literally fresh back from the land of sun and fun, Florida, uh, to explain to us what this is. Thank you, Walter. Oh, great. What a welcome. I got back from 75 degrees to 30 degrees last night. <laughs> what a change. Good morning. Good morning. It's wonderful to see all your beautiful faces and the joy on your faces. What a song. What a lead in to what I want to, I want to talk about promises and faithfulness. God's promises and your faithfulness. Acts 1.8 reads, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Matthew 28.19, the Great Commission. Go and make disciples of all peoples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Through the power of the Holy Spirit and your faithfulness to Jesus' commandment and promises, St. Giles has taken the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ literally to the ends of the earth, to those places around the world where the name of Jesus is not known. Thank you for your faithfulness and generosity in both your giving of money, but also your time and talents by going to many of these places and for your prayers that undergirds and brings about the results that we've seen. 
St. Giles is making a huge difference in many dark places around the world where people don't know Jesus and are without the hope of eternal life. Places like Uganda, where James Anderson has founded a Christian orphanage that rescues children from the garbage dumps, gives them a safe home, healthy food, and education, and where they learn of Jesus Christ. Places like Cairo, Egypt, where we have a sister church, and Sarah Hill and Lindsay Sherrard and many of you have gone to serve uh, the church's Muslim neighbors with medical assistance and the love of Jesus. Places like Kazakhstan, where many of us have gone for over 20 years to serve and love orphans, students, teachers, the handicapped, doctors and dentists, the business community, but increasingly to come alongside and encourage and strengthen the local church that's being persecuted and their leaders and their families. And also in Kazakhstan, Vicki Charbonneau, our own Vicki Charbonneau, who grew up here, who has founded a safe home for many children and single mothers. Uh, and it, it's a beautiful place. I hope some of you may go and visit that home someday. It's just filled with the love of Jesus. And Vicki and Beth are changing lives and saving them. Places like Haiti, where many of you have gone to serve and love many people in desperate situations. The missions brochure, which is in the back, I don't know if any of you picked it up, gives you much more detail of uh, the missions, the global missions that we support around the world and in the United States. It lists several other places uh, that we have uh, mission partners in Jordan, Thailand, Spain, the Dominican Republic, campus ministries right here in the United States that uh, focus on meeting, building relationships, and sharing the love of Christ with international students. People that work with crew, intervarsity, and international students. Our mission partners also include the new president of YWAM, David Hamilton, former member of this church, and leaders in World Horizons, crew, and one uh, that is preparing to move and serve in India. Our annual Easter offering is devoted to help with these un their unexpected and unbudgeted uh, needs that come up inevitably. It also is available to provide partial support for St. Child's members to participate in short-term mission trips. For example, in April, Vicki is bringing a young girl and a uh, young mother <laughs> Uh, to the United States for three months for surgery and medical treatment. We're helping with travel expenses uh, with their trip and stay in the States. Also in April, James Anderson, Pastor Josh, and Keith Hill are going to Uganda to help support Peter's Heart, which is the Christian orphanage that James um, has played such a critical role in. In August, uh, Josh and I will go with three other leaders from our uh, partner congregations in Interlink Resources to work directly with pastors of, that are uh, Kazakh Pentecostal, Methodist, and Presbyterian pastors, about a dozen of them, uh, really uh, working with them in their new and, and supporting their new evangelism and church planning efforts. So we request your prayers for all three of those, those trips. We also expect that we're gonna have um, unanticipated requests from other missionaries, perhaps to come home on furlough or to help uh, with special projects uh, that always seem to come up. So please be in prayer for all the mission partners and consider um, a gift 
to the Mission Expansion Fund that goes beyond, uh, above and beyond uh, the funds that we budget to support them because there's always needs that come up. Thank you again for your faithfulness. Thank you again for your love for the lost around the world. God bless you. Free step and, down. And I refer you to the brochure that's in the back. Yeah. Would you stand here with me as, 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 as pray? Lord Jesus, I, I thank you for all the work you are, you, that Walter's just gone over, and it is, it's yours. It's all yours, Jesus. We thank you for each one of those individuals that really gives their life to what you're doing through them and beyond them. Lord, we hold up these trips to you. We hold up the future of these ministries to you. Lord, I think an individual recently told me, the, the church is forgetting about the, the world. Lord, we don't want to forget about the world. We want to go to it. And so we ask that you give us everything we need to do that. And we ask it through the power of your spirit to the glory of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just want to add one additional thing that I forgot to say. It's estimated that the American church gives approximately 1.7% of their mission giving to the unreached peoples in the world. St. Giles gives over 50% of our mission's budgets to the unreached. Thank you. God bless you. If you'd like to give to this, um, I should tell you how to do that, right? Um, you can uh, either do that online. There's a little drop-down spot online that you can give to the mission expansion offering uh, for global missions. Um, if you want to do it by check, uh, just make sure you write mich mission expansion offering or global mission, so something on there just to tell us what it is. Otherwise, it goes straight into my book account, and <laughs> that's how I spend the money. I'm kidding. Um, would you pray with me uh, once again? Lord Jesus, we do, we just, <laughs> it sounds wild to say we hold up to you the world, but we do because it's your world. You've come for it. As we said earlier, didn't, you didn't just come for this group, that group, but you so love the world and we hold it up to you. Lord, we also hold up to you those in our, uh, in our own congregation, in our community here that really need your healing touch right now. Um, Lord, we, we give you the sleets as, as they mourn the passing of Hank and uh, just pray your peace with them. Lord Jesus, um, we continue to give you uh, Mike as he, as he goes through this treatment, Lord. Um, be with him. Bring healing to his body. We give you Walt and Marcia. Lord, walk with them steadfast. Lord, I know there's, there's, just, there's so many others that just need your healing touch in our community right now. Um, we need your discernment right now. There's people who are making huge decisions. I know we have youth that are making college decisions and it, it feels like the world in front of them and it kind of is the world in front of them, but it's your world. And so we ask that you guide them. Lord, we ask that you meet us where we need to see you most. And we pray that during this Holy Week, all of that would be answered through just your repeated revealing of your faithfulness to us over and over again. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Friends, let's go to the table. Pray with me once more. Jesus, this is the place that you've prepared for us. We didn't prepare it for ourselves. We didn't even know what our own problems were. We thought our biggest problems were a million different things. But you've come and said, no, is that you need to be set free from the power of sin and death. And only I can do that. And you did it. And you did it. So we praise your name for that. Lord, as we come this morning, we ask, meet us here. Help us to take great joy and the privilege it is to be called sons and daughters of the Most High. We pray this in your name, Christ. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood.
whenever you eat this bread or you drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me because when you do it, you declare my death and my resurrection until I return. I wanna go ahead and invite our servers to come forward this morning. At St. Giles, we have gluten-free right here in the middle, and then we have two stations on either side that have regular bread. Um, And we just come straight forward, we take the elements right there at the table, and we put the cups on either side. Um, My favorite statement is, this is not the table of St. Giles, this is the table of our Lord, and if you can say that he is your Lord, then you are welcome at his table. Brothers and sisters, these are the gifts of God for the people of God, so we invite you Would you come?
Let's stand and sing together. Sisters, thank you for worshiping. Thank you for coming into the presence of the Lord together this Palm Sunday. Just a reminder, I know it's still early. 
for you second servicers. So we've got coffee and snacks uh, and common ground. Stick around, enjoy each other. Um, we'll go back there together. If you're new with us, we have a little bag. We'd love to give you with some information and some fun, fun ways to write and take notes um, as you follow Jesus, read his word. I want to encourage you. If you still have your palm branch, hold it up. Receive the benediction. Go forth in the name of he who is so faithful, he exceeds our expectations beyond our greatest dreams. We couldn't dream of love so great. Let his faithfulness come around you in goodness and mercy all week long. Go in the faithful name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Thank you, friends. I'm so glad she's here. God, I'm so glad she could come. It does. It adds a lot. It does. It adds so much.